Hello and welcome to Cutting to the Bull in the Post-Truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. Claire. Hey. And Pete. Hello! Thanks for that, you just deafed me. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Today, we're going to talk about the Doddleston messages. We're going to do some high strangeness this week. I fancy the change. Do you know what they are? Yeah. You do? Is that because you've read up on it? A little bit. Oh, all right. Yeah, I, have. I ain't got a clue, so. New to me. Woohoo! <laughs> Quell surprise, Pete doesn't read the article I sent him. Do you want to explain what it is then, Ben? I'll just explain when I get to it, Mike. We'll thank some of the listeners first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't oh, tell me how to run the show, it. damn you! Get back in your science officer chair and stay there. <laughs> Normally, you give it just a, an explanation of what the episode is, then you go on to... Well, I'm changing it up, mix it up, keeping it fresh. Huh. Flip it, reverse it. Boom. Get on with it, then. <laughs> <laughs> go on, football's on tonight. <laughs> Captain O'Rack, science officer, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's thank some of the returning listeners. Well, I beg your pardon. <laughs> you don't want to listen to this. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to hear you. Now, now, children, come on. <laughs> I'll put you both in timeouts in separate corners. <laughs> right, where shall I start on the list? Farmington, Michigan. I haven't seen you before. Hello, welcome. Monsi, New York. Tehran in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And you know what, Whoa. mate? Listening in Iran, right? If you've caught them a few times, I'm quite intrigued. I want you to message the page. Yes, please do. No, no, it's, it's an unusual place to be listening to little old us, isn't it? That's what I mean. It could be an expat of some form. It could be. I don't know if there's many knocking around in Iran, but hey, I'll message page. One or two. It's Facebook at Cutting to the Bull in the Post Truth Apocalypse, YouTube at Apocalypse Bull, and SoundCloud and most other podcasting platforms at uh, Cutting to the Bull in the PTA. Back to the list. Perryville, Missouri. Otomachi, Japan. Royal Tunbridge Wells in the UK, I like that one. Not just Tunbridge Wells, but Royal, Royal Tunbridge, Tunbridge Wells. Wells. Newport, United Kingdom, Franklin, New York, Frankfurt and Maine in Germany, La Rue, oh God, La Rue in France, La Rue, mm-hmm. something like that. La Rue. Yeah, that, that sounds better. Ban Lang in Thailand, Edgware in the UK, New City, New York, Topeka, Kansas, you're new as well. Welcome to you, Stevenage in the UK. Welcome back. I haven't seen him for a, I haven't seen them for a while, Stevenage. Yeah. Ashburn, Virginia, and Guadalajara, Spain. Wow. As always, a big thank you, and thanks for listening. Tell a friend. We've obviously offended the Irish recently. He's maybe no, just gone through the back catalogue. No, no, they have gone through no the back catalogue. at the top. <laughs> he's gone through the back catalogue. Yeah. God, they must have had some real time on their hands. Could have had COVID. Could be working twelve-hour shifts. <laughs> That's a valid point. Listening to us talk. Yep. Jesus. So, the Doddleston messages. What are they? Well, messages from Doddleston. (laughs) Messages from the 16th century. Oh. On a computer? On a computer. Did a computer from the 1980s really communicate with a farmer in the 16th century? No. (laughs) (laughs) Off the fence straight away. That's not like where you peaked. Is that it? Is that that the episode done then? Yeah. Yeah, alright. Thanks for listening. (laughs) The Doddleston Messages is a phenomenon dating back to the mid-80s, so it's fairly recent. Hmm. Well, fairly for, local. We, fairly were all, local. we were all alive, put it that way. Yeah, it's fairly local. It's in Cheshire, which is next door to next door county to us, hmm. in the quiet British village of Doddleston, which sounds very country-ish. Everyone's wearing, oh, are, definitely. Everyone's wearing tweed. There's some kind of village pub where everyone goes and they never go anywhere else. But they've all got a slight weird Scouse accent. Yeah, there's probably a swingers party <laughs> in these small villages. I always assume there is. <laughs> lots of Land Rover keys. Land Rover keys. <laughs> local pedophile. <They>, local pedo, <laughs> who everyone refers to as Nancy James. But no one ever does anything about. Just don't go near him. <laughs> Just don't let him look after your kids. Usually a Tory MP lives there, and they're like the lord of the fucking man. It's like the vicar of Dibley, basically. That's probably the pedo. <laughs> yeah, well, could be. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Now, this seemingly paranormal event has been documented by Ken Webster, one of the occupants of the household at the time, and has been covered in his book, The Vertical Occupants, at the time... Oh, sorry, no. The Vertical... Sorry, has been covered in his book, The Vertical Plane, as well as the 1996 episode of Errorless World on the YouTube channel Nostalgia Nerd. But don't listen to them, listen to us. So he wrote a book about it. He wrote a book about it. So he wanted to make money off writing a book. He wanted to get the truth out there, Pete. Right, Okay. 
That's what they all say, isn't it? Uh, it's just whenever I, whenever I talk about Sasquatch or anything, oh, they're getting paid for making it. They, they obviously got paid. Pete, you can't tell me that red thermal blob was a pregnant Bigfoot. 100% it was. You cannot tell me that. <laughs> I'm sorry. 100%? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. You sound like me. What was that episode we did where you told me it was just drunk hillbillies and I said it was aliens? <laughs> Was it one of the abductions? No, well, it, was, it was the closest encounter you'll ever get. Kelly Hopkins. The Kelly Hopkinsville encounter. Go back and listen to that one. You lot told me I was mad. He was just drunk hillbillies. But no, no, it was aliens. <laughs> Goblin aliens. Was it Goblin aliens. So, back to Donaldson. It was 1984 and Kev Webster, along with his girlfriend Debbie and their lodger Nick, went out to visit for a friend for a couple of hours one evening. You don't get lodgers anymore, do you, really? I'm a lodger, technically. Different. Yeah, yeah. They're not called lodgers anymore, though, are they? <laughs> They're good housemates nowadays. Yeah, not called lodgers anymore. Tenants. Tenants. No, it's more official than that nowadays. That's the point. In the old days, it was like, oh yeah, he's travelling through. Yeah, he can stay at mine for a month. It was like I got a spare room. Well, I don't know. I don't know their exact details. For all we know, they're a thruple. They probably were. Nick's the gimp. Nick, Nick could be the gimp. <laughs> Who knows? Might live in a closet, wear a mask. They went out to visit a friend for a couple of hours one evening. Upon their return, Webster decided to check the upstairs BBC microcomputer, which had been left on and surprisingly hadn't caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> BBC computer in the mid 80s, are you leaving it on when you pop out? Fucking hell. Dies him with death. So he went on to have a he went up to have a, a look at what Nick was doing. It's just Nick's computer, I'm assuming. Webster's just gone up there to have a fucking poke around on in Nick's computer. To his surprise, upon opening the Edward word processor, he found the following message. Ken, Deb, Nick. True are the nightmares of a person that fears. Safe are the bodies of the silent world. Turn, pretty flower, turn towards the sun, for you shall grow and sow. But the flower reaches too high and withers in the burning light. Get out your bricks. Pussycat, pussycat went to London to seek fame and fortune. Faith must not be lost. For well, this shall be your redeemer. And then he kicked Nick out for being a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick, have you been taking mind altering drugs and writing poetry? Now, it's a bit of a chilling poem and one that couldn't be explained by the three residents at the time. The computer, a BBC micro, had been borrowed from the school where Ken worked as a teacher. Not long after receiving this message, the computers returned and it, another wasn't borrowed until February 1985. And it was here that again another message was received during after an evening where the computer was left turned on. Oh, okay, they're saying a message was received. We didn't have the internet at this point. No. 1985, no. So it wasn't coming through... The cable. This, yeah. Now this computer would have had a power cable and that's it. Yeah, yeah. There'd be nothing else. Power it would, cable. It wouldn't have even been connected to a phone line. It would so how was the message getting onto the computer? Other right. than someone typing it. He said he opened the word processor. How, how do you know it was just wasn't a saved file? Mm. Well, who can say? It's high strangeness. We'll get into it. Mm. This time, it had a completely different tone and grammar style. And the message in the file read as follows. I write on behalf of many what strange words thou speak. It's all written in Old English. It's all written in Old English. I'm trying to convey that as I read it. I must confess that I have... Also being ill of schooled. Sometimes, methinks, alterations are somewhat barful, for they break main asleep in mine bed. Thou art goodly man who hath fanciful woman who dwell in mine home. I hath no want to affray, for only sith min half witted antics as has ripped at win main boned hath I been wreathed a night. I've no idea where the fuck that's going. You just say he's a bit dim, though. Mine yeah. is mine. No! <laughs> well, it isn't, is it? Well done, Proro. Fuck me. Well, you know what? Pete, get a job as an English teacher. You see. <laughs> I'm on it. No, do you know what, though? That makes more sense to me in the sense that the first message wasn't in... It was English of the times they're apparently from. But this one is. But this one is. So, because it was something I was going to raise about that first mm. message. Why is it in now a time yeah. English? Don't worry, the plot thickens later on. Okay. I'll finish the, the message. I have seen many alterations, last decharge house, 
and thou home. Tis a fitting place with lights which this devil maketh, and costly thinges which only my friend Edmund Grey can afford. O the king himself, t'was a great crime to have bribed man a house. L.W. What I really like about that is he's basically like, you're living in my house and you've done devilish things with them, like putting lights in that I can't explain how they work. And you've hmm. got costly thangs. Costly thangs? Yeah. So he's like, I suppose all the, the 1980s... I was thinking he was, he was a black woman from the block, Bronx for a minute. I have <laughs> thing, yo. That's only marginally racist. No, not at all. The woke crew are coming after you, my friend. It's not racist in any way, shape, or form. Can't you're, do an impression. You're a white anymore. man doing the impression of a black woman, that. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Let's not start singing Tina Turner then. Uh, no, probably not a good idea not to, no. No, Mike, don't put that in. You're like head of Tina Turner private dancing. Ears. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that in my life. I'd like to get an erection again. It's the again. way he was wiggling his bum as he was singing it. Like, that's all I got. In me. Ben's lap, yeah. <laughs> that was the worst thing. <laughs> He's like, this isn't even a rosy Ganel and Tina Turner in my head. Why have you got a boner then? I usually have one. Oh, right, fair enough. <laughs> I didn't go from semi some soft to erect at a moment's notice. I'm back again. I'm back again. I'm back Fuck again. Yep, yeah. erect. Hard. Soft. <laughs> That's it. All three. Done. All three. Right there. Uh, your new nickname might have to be Arthur then. Well, Arthur Lob on. Hey, no, my nickname's just one's neck. You keep saying that, but no one's going to call it Ian. Oh, yeah. I, I can, I can dream. I just, this is my reality, and I'll make it as I wish. But there's no by now that Webster and his friends realise that something really strange was happening. Who had written these strange words? A ghost. Who was L. W. and Edmund Gray? A ghost. Why, <laughs> why did the writer of the message assume someone had stolen his house? Because he was a ghost. And most importantly, how did these messages get onto the computer? Ghost fingers! <laughs> Most people that Webster confided in about this had dismissed it as a prank. But the computer wasn't connected to any sort of network, and obviously, as we said, this is before the time of the internet. Peter Trinder, a fellow teacher and a friend of Webster's, had a closer look at the message and deduced it to be Middle English from the 16th century. And if you've ever read Chaucer... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was reading it last night. Was you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Canterbury Tales. Yeah. Yeah. You'd recognise... You're sad for just knowing that much. <laughs> so one of the pivotal authors of English history, of course I know who he is, Peter. I'm, sure I'm so. classically educated, don't you know? Never heard of the twat. Have <laughs> No, I've never heard of him. Well, I've never been into him, you know, like books and that, though. What about the Bronte sisters? Unless, yeah, I've heard of the Bronte sisters, so I had to do that in school, like Charlotte Bronte and Emily Bronte and all that. You've done Shakespeare, yeah? Yeah, I did a bit it's of Shakespeare. It's the same sort of thing. Same yeah, but era. I just... Genuinely, not Chaucer, 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 not someone I've ever heard of. Ain't no Enid Blyton. <laughs> Certainly isn't. God bless her racist soul. <laughs> was she a racist? Yeah. Was she? Secret Seven, there was nothing racist about Se- them. Famous famous Five, wasn't it? And the Secret Seven. I thought the Secret Seven was a fucking bunch of Spider-Man villains. Oh, that's a Sinister Six, sorry. Uh, I saw the famous, no, no, the famous Adventures five. Four. Hey, man, was she just completely yeah. unimaginative? <laughs> oh, so yeah. I never read the I famous five. I had a couple more kids. <laughs> Fuck it. I never read the famous five books I was a mm. kid. See, I always the read the Secret five. Seven. Secret, Secret Seven, seven The Adventurous Four. There's a few of them. See, I, I, yeah, Secret Seven I read probably just five seems, or six of them. It sounds awful. No, they it was all right, man. I used to like books, it. I've got yeah. a massive collection when I was a kid. They were proper little adventure books, like, but adventures that you would do yourself. Wasn't it really kind of thing? What they went down the cave at the seashore. Yeah, but they'd be no, but there's like they'd be making up like there'd always be like a mystery involved. Yeah, there was like an they? army helicopter there or something. And they'd always, it was a little bit like Tintin. The Tintin I used seven to read. It was seven Tintins. Wasn't it? Uh, or five or four. Or, or five or four. Or six. <laughs> I know that was Marvel. Yeah, that was a. <laughs> Maybe they were. Maybe they did. Maybe they took a day off being villains and went to the beach. The the one the one stayed at home. Uh, yeah. uh, there's only six of us now. Let's be sinister! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if you've ever read George, so you'd recognise the style. Trinder posited the theory that whoever they were communicating with, they spoke in the same grammatical inflection. And so the trio replied in the same file. They asked about LW, they asked about their life, about Edmund Gray, why and how they contacted him, and what the trio should do next. 
A day passed and lo and behold a reply had been sent back. Wow. Mm. Through the next few messages Webster was able to discern intel on where and when and who this mysterious acquaintance was. L.W. turned out to be a man named Lucas Vainman. Why Wayman? Wayman. A man from the mid-1540s who seemed to have lived on the same plot of land that Webster's house now occupied. That's quite a quite a coincidence, mm. isn't it? What, com- what computer's he got then? <laughs> Turnip 3000. Or was he just writing it on parchment and putting it into the fire? Well, it's not, it's not, it's coming from Spatial that Spatial time crossover. It's not a time machine, is it? It's the fact that he's obviously a fucking spirit that's still living in this house. And has somehow figured out that you can write words on this computer. Or it's Nick as we searched it and found out this old guy used to live or, this time. Or there's that and <laughs> it's just a hilarious prank, prank. by Nick. Nick. Yeah. But apparently what made the evidence more compelling was though Peter Trinder's assessment of the messages which pinpointed the tone, grammar and Lexis fit with 16th century Cheshire. So I suppose you've got to know a little bit there and you've just... You've just Due to lack of travel options many centuries ago, dialect and language back then would have been quite different and, and, and dramatic. It would have been dramatically yeah, yeah, different between yeah, yeah. different counties mm-hmm. in the UK. Well, this is why our, some of our accents are so different. Like, your Geordie accent yeah, well, to your London accent. Yeah, well, the UK is the only place where you can go three counties over and, like, the people there speak completely differently, have completely different customs, and you consider them less than animals. <laughs> <laughs> for those customs. Oh, like and, and, and there's four different names for a scone or a bap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you call a what do you call a, a roll of I mean I call a bap a bit of cob or a bap. You know, bap, a soft cob, bread roll. Or a bread Whatever. bun or a roll or Yeah, a, it's a cob. I call it a cob. Balm. A butty. A, a butty. butty. Well, Butty's just a, a slang for a sandwich. Yeah, butty can be anything, man. Butty's just a yeah, slang for a sandwich. Put a bit of butter on it, it's a butty, isn't it? I suppose so, it's got butter on it, it classes has it. You know, it's we've, we've all got very different accents and dialects in the UK. Literally, town to town. Yeah. But you only have to go to bloody Dorley. Well, I'm from Dorley, I've lived in Dorley all my life. How best jockey, like How best jockey. And all that, and then you go literally up the road, and if you said how best somebody, they'd look at you like, what? Yeah, because oh, you go down to Mailey and say how best, you get beaten up. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And there's four miles between the two. That's it. It's, it's crazy. It's that. <laughs> then you go to Brosley. You need a passport to get to Brosley. And, you know, everyone's got six fingers and four toes. Not from round this area, are <laughs> you, tiger? No. Ooh. They're are are you related to me? Oh, Claire, go on, on defend, your, defend your town, Claire. They're not, they're not that farmer. Are you my cousin? You are? Let's have sex then. That... Have you got six fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Can you play the banjo? <laughs> Diddling, ding, 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 ding. It's gone, Claire, it's defend big, it, man. It's a big town, man. I'm not, I live there, I live here now. Yeah, I know, you grew up there. <laughs> yeah, but I live here now. And... She wasn't born in Brosley. Her family no. aren't Brosleyites. From the black country. I think I from the Bronx then. Yeah. <laughs> More from the block. From Tipton. You're like me, you're Birmingham over spill. Yeah. Oh, is he not pure blood? Scummy brummy. Am I no, the I'm, I'm the only Dorley Delford native here, aren't I? You, you were from elsewhere. Yeah, so I, I was born here. Yes. I don't think that's something you should be shouting about too much. <laughs> I'm Dorley native. Dorley native. Arm, thick in the head. Yeah. I'm from the Garden of England. Well, good for you. Canterbury <laughs> Kent. <you> southern fucker. <laughs> You're from Canterbury, you don't even know the Canterbury Tales. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of the, the Canterbury Tales. You hadn't heard of a bit ago. Oh, I've heard of the Canterbury Tales, but I've never heard of the author. I wouldn't have been able to tell you who wrote the Canterbury Tales. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what the Canterbury Tales are about. Canterbury. <laughs> <laughs> a fox, a fox in Canterbury, and he's got two tails. Let's go back to the story a second. Trinda <laughs> even tried to send messages separate from the rest of the group, and then delete them to ensure none of them were the perpetrators of this phenomenon. So How does that work? Well, he's he's sending messages and then deleting them, <laughs> so that none of the, to make sure that none, so he's trying to, to see if, if they can if still he gets be answered. Yeah, 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 and no, he knows that nobody else has physically seen, seen it. it. Yeah. yeah. So the only person that could have seen it is this ah, got ghost. Yeah, yeah that but, makes sense. But they didn't get a reply. Okay, that makes it a bit fishy. Well, actually, it does get weirder because 
it thinks of a stranger term when Webster wrote a message back to Lucas mentioning he was from 1985. And the reply he received complicated matters even further. Yow said your time be 1985. Me thought you were else from 2109. Like your friend whom dis binge leans bossed prey. Speak English, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so basically he's saying, whoa, you're from 1985? I thought you were from 2109? Like your friend who, who also messaged me? Yeah, it turns friend. out that, um, yeah, he's not a friend. Well, friend. The, 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 this, this, this little back and forth is now a three-way. But there, there could be an answer to that in the sense that if you believe in the spiritual world and you believe in ghosts, they'd have no actual concept of time itself and they could be existing in lots of different times all at once because they're a ghost. Um, I know. You know what I mean? They've lived but, through all of those times. They could still be... How living. embarrassing would it be to be like a caveman ghost or a Tudor... Let's say, no, a Tudor ghost with your big neck ruff, right? And your tights and your, your baggy little thing around here and you... And you, maybe you've got your head under your arm because you were actually cut off by any eight or something. <laughs> and you end up in the future where everyone's in silver suits you flying cars. That'd be terribly embarrassing. Mm. But you, you'd have grown up, well, grown up as as a spirit watching all this develop. It's not, you know... You're oh, not just, oh, not gonna, oh, so you mean like there's, they don't stay in the same clothes like historical ghosts? No, they'll still be in the same clothes, but they'll be watching everything, like, developing around them no, over the years. It'd be embarrassing if you die from a prostate exam. One of the... One of the it ways, would, yeah. Your one pants of, around your ankles, a doctor dies at the same time, he's got his fingers up your arse. Yeah. Well, Go into the spirit <laughs> world, then a finger up your arse by a doctor with your pants around your ankles. Well, one of the explanations... And a slight erection. <laughs> bringing, it, bringing it back to this, one of the explanations for that could be, kind of what I was saying, but I've remembered better how how to explain it so basically the spirit the ghost yeah lives in one time and it is only in one time it, it but it is going through all the different times so at some point 1950 could some it could make contact with 1950 and in 1950 they're making contact with this ghost yeah that's right. still in 1640 16, yeah whatever year it is they're stuck in that realm, but they're just getting like snippets of these messages that are coming through to them from all the different times as time is travelling. Bit of a leap, though, isn't it? Where are they getting their messages? Because they haven't got a computer. Is no, it? no. Ah, but what happens is he goes to bed and he's let, he leaves a parchment and quill out. Uh, <laughs> and overnight, it's, like, yeah. it's yeah. written. <laughs> but it's like, is it echoes or something? Can they. Because they're living... But they're in back and forth, time. Yeah. They're with a banter, aren't they? You're in my house, you try that. Do they, so do they see us? Yeah, well, at first he says, what have you done? You've put all light switches yeah. and all sorts. So he's seeing his, his, his house or his spot. Well, you know, this is my now, point. Isn't he? Do they see us like ghosts in the sense that you, you kind of zip in and out of it? Like, one minute you sat normal in your old fucking 1600s, you and walk into the minute, kitchen you and see, it's, it's you 2019, see like these, 2109. Yeah, yeah. Slips, man. And obviously, slips. then they start to realise that life is not changing for them. They start to get the realisation that they are dead and that they are spirits, but they're stuck in this realm and they keep getting snippets of these different times in the future as they come along. So it's it, in the sense that Oh, it's so fucking hard to explain. I'm still baffled. I'm well, I am as well. Because <laughs> you're, like, you can make a film you're trying to, it yeah, it make a film good. of it. You know what? Write a series of books about it on that garnet shit. I know book. what I know what my brain's thinking, but trying to put it into words mm. is very difficult. Look, look, I think are you trying to say that for some reason your theory is that ghosts are sort of pan time dimensional in a way, in a sense, and so he's like had some kind of. Has he had some kind of time slip and he's been in their house? Or has, is he like, literally like, he's still in the house and he's stuck there, but he's also in his, I don't know, I'm confused myself. There's like the term I had two just, fucking block. And this is it, this is why you think, well, is that what a ghost is? It just kind of like then, slips into your time zone and, and then you, this, you see a ghost. And then this, this fucker from 2109, 
He's, he's also coming into this this thruple, making it a quadruple. <laughs> it could quadruple. Drop <laughs> I'd like to think if you're a ghost, you can go anywhere. Mm. What do you think? I don't um, believe in him. So. I don't know. Now, I'm not down for ghosts, so I must admit. But, uh, you know, change my mind, is all I'm saying mm. on that. If I, I see something... It, yeah. But I want a force ghost. I don't want just, like, a bit of a shad corner or something rolls across the table. I want a force ghost. That would be proof then, wouldn't it? Well, no, because you could be having an aneurysm. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Could be the first time. <laughs> just could be your brain hallucinating. That's why even if I see a ghost, I don't know if I believe it. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Hmm. God, this, it seems that Lucas wasn't only communicating from the trio from 1985, but also seemed to have contact with the second party in the year 2109. The Leems Boist message in his in, in, mentioned in his message translates to box of lights, or better yet, some kind of computer or communication device. Which kind of makes sense. Now, what if this one from 2009? Let's say there's time travel in 2009, and somehow he's, he's playing some weird. He's left <laughs> something in this dude's house for him to communicate with the future. Maybe they're lovers. What? Oh, I'm confused now. Yeah. It's the poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> just throwing it out there, maybe this guy from 2109 went back to the 1540, fell in love with Lucas uh, and, and left him a communication device and maybe Lucas fucked up and put it into 1985 because he's a, he's a dude from 1540 who has no training on using any type of complicated machine electronic equipment. <laughs> Who's to say? There's a leak, uh, that's my theory. Anyone else gonna jump on all that? No way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I really don't know how they've uh, yeah. even translated that to box of lights. It's true. It's very true actually, Claire. How would you know? Well, somebody studies a language at that time. I know. guess I guess you could do it that way if you've got some I mean, of this, this mates, Ken's mates, a bit of a student of this. Mm. But then again, is he just in on it as well? <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> you never know, do you? It's Nick, I'm telling you, he's making <laughs> it up. <laughs> what? How dare you slander Nick <laughs> like that? So, curious to discover what would happen, Webster decided to use the BBC Micro to write to the future with a simple message of calling 2109. Really? The reply that came back read, Try to understand that you three have a purpose that shall in your lifetime change the face of history. We... 2109 must not affect your thoughts directly, but give you some sort of guidance that will allow room for your own destiny. All we can say is that we're all part of the same God, whatever he is, question mark, is. Bit cryptic. Bollocks, if you ask me, God. <laughs> well, have, have these three done anything that has changed the face of history? Well, Nick changed his name and became David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Ken went off to become Putin. <laughs> no, they haven't, no. Well, not yet. Maybe could, it's time. Pretty well, good, a bit fine at this point, though. <laughs> I think it's nearly 40 years Yeah, ago. exactly. Yeah. Shit, it so is, you yeah, put them it? in their 30s, yeah. then in their 70s. Don't fall into the trap, Mike, like I always do, thinking that 1985 was only like 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 2000 was 20 years ago. Yeah, we're all in that yeah. trap, aren't we? Yeah. I never think of it. Oh, the night is, yeah, that was only fucking 20 years ago. No, it wasn't then. It was fucking dirty, nearly. Oh. It's the millennium issue, that is. Yeah, totally. It fucked us up. Mm. So, now the story has splintered off into three timelines. 1540s, 1985 and 2109. Not only that, but the individual or individuals in 2109. It's difficult to pinpoint how many they are from this era as they all refer to themselves using the singular they. which is just some kind of human hive mind. Yeah. Or well, sounds like a bunch of twats to me. <laughs> something to do with pronouns. Maybe. Something, to, something to do with all these genders. Oh, God, it's, the future's gone completely woke. We have to call yeah. ourselves they. It's all these it's genders. The it's not him, her, oh. or anything. It's just they now. All androgynous. Yeah. And nobody has a penis. Nobody has a vagina. No. We all, we all just... <laughs> How do you replicate? It's all done in test tubes now. It's 2109, Mike. We're vat-grown. 
They just take a sample of our DNA. It's like a bad A sample of our, our partner's we're DNA. We're not going to lose penises in 100 years. Yeah, they'll find... They'll <laughs> find <laughs> fall off. <laughs> no use for anymore. <laughs> you it's all virtual <laughs> sex. Come on, you've watched bloody Demolition Man, haven't you? Yeah. They don't have sex anymore. Ooh, mm. yuck. Only if you're making a baby. You have to get a licence for that, don't you? Yeah, even then they don't do it properly, do they? they? Surely the towel's for, you know... Just to wipe the sweat away. Really? Yeah. Not to... You're not going to jizz still? You can use it as a jizz drag if you want, Claire. (laughs) 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 Just play Superman. You ever done that? (laughs) They haven't played Superman. No. No, go on, explain Superman to to us the listener. It's where you, like, jizz all over the back... And get the, you know, when you have like a bed sheet and you know, stick it to the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah. I'm sure that cape is not fluttering. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so from here, the story gets even weirder. Lucas's real name is revealed to be Thomas Harden in subsequent messages. Debbie Webster's partner also claims to have had visions of him. <laughs> And when Trinder decides to interfere with the messages, he is warned by 2109 that he is threatening the mission the trio have. So Trinder's these is, is Ken's teacher mate who was deciphering the 1540s <laughs> language. I don't know who the fuck's who now. Confused. If you want to hear this like complete story with every single message, go and check out Webster's book, The Vertical Plane. Yeah. So he wrote a book about it. Do you think he made any money off the book? I don't know. That's that's the end of, of our tale as such on this. Well, let's let's talk about the theories. Lucas's messages are are filled with inconsistencies, and some of the information he provides about the 16th century is incorrect. The grammar he also uses is inaccurate. Uh, yeah, this world so special it was accurate. Oh, oh, Ken, who was you know, Ken Trinder, he was mm. the uh, he's Ken's mate, the teacher. He didn't know what he was on about. He's a student of this, but he's not an expert. Mm. So he's he could have bodged it, or he may not have known the grammar was incorrect. I don't know. I don't know about 16th century grammar. But then the 16th century guy did say he, he apologised for his poor... He did, oh, yeah, he did say, oh, he, I've listened to... Basically, he says, I've listened to you not speak, and I'm also quite poorly educated too. <laughs> it's what he said to him. <laughs> I struggle with it too, don't worry about it. So when it came to Ken writing his science fiction novel, The Vertical Plane, he probably thought it would be maybe great marketing for it to be based on a true story. Hmm. But, yeah, that's just a theory. So then we come to... What else? We, so we've got... The grammar's wrong, it's a fake, it's Nick. It's Nick. It's got to be <laughs> Nick. We've got Ken writing it him to himself. We've got... It's a legitimate time travel phenomena. Or we've got ghosts. One of the first two. I'm almost... Uh, my, my pet theory, my head canon, is that the guy from 2109 fell in love with the guy from the 1540s <laughs> and gave him a device to communicate. But because the guy from 1540 wasn't that clever, and he admits that himself, he fucked up and ended up dialing 1985. Mm. That's the whole thing, dialing 1985. He... There, there was no connection to the computer yeah. when the... The guy did the blind test. It's advanced technology from 2109. It doesn't need a computer. It's the, 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 they're 100 years ahead. Well, when that guy did the blind test, put the message in and then deleted it, so no one asked... There was no reply, you know. It's... Well, but he did get scolded, actually, didn't he, for messing... Yeah, 2109, bitch at him. Yeah. Did you mess with things you don't understand? Mm-hmm. All right. What are we all doing? Oh, it's Nick, man. It's just a prank, isn't it? Yeah. He's just wrote a poem on his story. Ken's gone up, had a look at it. Thought, well, this looks weird. Decided to write a reply. Yeah. Nick's gone back the next day, looked at his computer, opened the file up. There's a reply, and he's thinking, oh, well, I'll, I'll just I'll reply fuck to with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a, fuck with him. It's a prank, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it's high strangeness, and I like it. If it is marketing for your book, it's fucking great. I'll give it that. Mm. I know. It, it, I like it. I like the time travel aspect to it. I like it. We've gone to three different timelines at this point. I'm not saying it's true by all means. <laughs> I'm not saying it's true. Yeah, it's an interesting. I like it. Subject, but not for me, Pete. You slow your ghost theory. 
it's the most likely, if any, thing. Really? <laughs> More likely than Nick making well, it up. Well, no, no, other than Nick making it up completely. What if Nick was a ghost? <laughs> no, it's either Nick making it up ghost completely gimp. or... Ghost gimp? No, I go, I go with... I call bullshit on it. I think it was Nick making it up. Or, or somebody making it up. Mm. Someone having them over, I'm pretty sure. Well, still, it's fun. we got some fucked up facts. Yeah. Right. Team tune. Team tune. Facts, 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 fucked up facts, facts. Facts. The Tetris effect happens when you devote so much time to activity, it starts to shape your thoughts and dreams, like when Tetris players start seeing the real world in terms of stackable blocks. Go through that again. I didn't get it either. The Tetris effect Mm. happens when you devote so much time to activity it starts to shape your thoughts and dreams. Oh, okay, so if you spend all your time, like, painting models, you'll start looking, seeing the world as, like, oh, I could put that, I don't know, you know what I mean, mm. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or if you play too much card, you just think, oh, that's a good defensive position or something. I do that yeah, all the time yeah. anyway. Uh. <laughs> mm. So there we go. A study has shown that birds that live in colder places have smaller beaks. Well, it's, you know, things are small when they're cold. <laughs> McGill University's blog published an article about the study with the headline, Peckers get smaller when it gets colder. Yay! Hey! I think we should give them the pudding crown. Yeah. So what, where, where do the puffins come in on that? Because puffins ain't in a warm climate, and they've got quite fat, chosty beaks, haven't they, really? Yeah. And they're Greenland and that, aren't they? Iceland and that, they're pretty fucking cold. No, are they good. long beaks though? They're not long. They're no, they're not long beaks. beaks. They're fucking big beaks. Nah, but they're a bit lengthy. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're girthy. They're all at length. Fair enough. <laughs> the cold does tend to take away some of the length, doesn't it? Because the longer it is, the more the more heat cold loss it, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. The more cold it absorbs, and yeah, heat gets lost. Cold always beats warm. Oh, Every the time. Penguin? They, they got quite the long beak, haven't they? But they snuggle it down underneath their wings, mm. don't they? Which is maybe why they've got a long beak. Mm. They, they probably it. need the long beak for catching things in the ocean. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if they haven't got long beaks as such, have they? They've got more of a snout than a beak. Penguin with a beak? Research a picture of penguin beak <laughs> right now <laughs> and then recount yeah. that statement. They've got those, you know, I'll do it. They've got those, those two horns. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 They breathe fire too, the don't they? The eight mean? legs. No. <laughs> Spit acid. Oh, sorry, bro. I was thinking of the lesser known fire breathing fuck off bird. <laughs> I love it how you guys always take me fucking so seriously and literally when I say something. It's for the comedy effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I was going to mention the fact that they all, like, turn into little fucking wolves and shit and well, were little, penguins. Little were penguins yeah, yeah. No, I don't want a were penguin I don't want to be hard to shoot a were penguin wouldn't a were penguin turn into a man not a wolf that would well, be a were yeah. penguin wolf yeah, be a were, yeah a were wolf queen <laughs> yeah. Yeah. point Mike that's why you're science officer there we go <laughs> <laughs> I've heard me bad this week <laughs> In 1883, the residents of Verviers, Belgium, memorialised their favourite mayor by entombing his heart in the town square fountain. Well, why the fuck not? That's what I want one day. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be that beloved, I'm afraid. The swan's neck will be there, though. <laughs> At least a part of him is there. Yeah, your balls might get hung up somewhere. <laughs> Are you suggesting I get fucking strung up by my balls <laughs> after taking over Dory's as I ran a good dictator? Probably. <laughs> you do look a bit like Mussolini. Yeah, I, was gonna <laughs> say, I, I was about to say, it's those pictures of it. I'm just seeing his vision of like the Mussolini when he's being hung. It's like, yeah. What do you want to do? I never do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> as he was just doing the exact hand actions that Mussolini used to do. <laughs> Apart from the salute, didn't do that. At least the trains will be on time. There you go, what else do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Public right. transport will be on time and reliable. What more do you want? In 1999, the head of Coca Cola mooted the idea of temperature monitoring vending machines that would mm. charge you more for a drink on a hot day. 
Ooh, Ooh that's nasty. Yeah. That's some vulture capitalism right Same there, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, what a twat. Yeah. That's all you can say about that, isn't it? What a yeah, twat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, at least it didn't happen, eh? Yeah. That we know of. Dirty bastard. Dirty capitalist bastard. Like they're not making enough fucking money as it is. It, it does happen, actually. Well, not on a hot day, just all the time in Spain. If you were on a refrigerated bottle of something, you pay... A little bit more. Like... Yeah, ten cents or whatever hmm. more than off the shelf. Hmm. Never noticed. All right. That. Never known. I mean, a while since I've been to Spain, though, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But a while since I've been abroad. I think everything I got was probably from the fridge last time I went, so I don't think I looked on the... No, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Do you know what they call workers who only come into office on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays? Lazy pricks. Part-timers. Twats. Who <laughs> <laughs> calls them that? <laughs> Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> Twats, yeah. <laughs> Was that really a fucked up fact? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'd love to work a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday every week. Get Monday at the way because I hate Mondays. I get Friday off. Oh. That's what I'll do one day. Yeah, so I want to be a twat. Mm. Well, I mean, I don't, it's not like they get the full day out of me, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, next one. In 1923, the newspaper Fleetwood Chronicle predicted that in 2023 on chilly days people would protect their kidneys by wearing kidney cozies. Oh, that's kind of cute. Quite would they quaint. be knitted by Nana? Yeah. <laughs> Got you a new kidney cozy this year, dearie. Get on it. Could be <laughs> I want to know what a kidney cozy is now, though. You're sort of kind of, I'm picturing like a bra, but for your kidneys. Yeah. yeah. Like a little belt with some knitted... Or some thermals or things over your kidneys. Why? What's up, what's up with our kidneys by this point in 2023? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a bit of an odd... Even Pete's stunned to silence. Prediction, isn't it? Very. That's probably why that paper's not going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they started making stupid predictions about the future. It is illegal to dry your clothes on a clothesline in many parts of the US. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, interesting. Why? Oh my Do we God, know why? Americans are ridiculous, aren't they? Mm. Why ah, is that? Big tumble dryer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got the, there's no reason behind that, Mike. No. Didn't say. I'm guessing it's got to be some kind of fucking business interest. I got to try and find the reason for that. Do you think it might attract bears? Might it? What? I don't know. <laughs> I know why. Are bears attracted to f- clean clothing? I know why. It's because they're afraid killer clowns are going to appear through them. Is and that what happens in killer... I no. remember the opening scene of It, the original film of It. Pete, you know what my clone phobia Do you ever think I'm watching no, It? I thought yeah. it was in the sewer. No, in the original It. Yeah. It's also a little that, kid with a boat. Scene? Yeah, but it's just, I think it's just after that. Uh-huh. And it's, it's all in, in like someone's back garden, and I can't remember it very well. But There's blooms mm. down here. I remember it was when I was a kid watching it, and that's about the point I turned it off. <laughs> I've watched I, it I don't do clones, I ain't watching that. Okay, so, what, why, what's why, illegal? Why can't, why Drying why clothes on a washing line. line. Well, Pete's looking for that, I'll carry on. Yeah. I've got a Nazi fact. Ooh, a na- oh, I know like you love a Nazi fact, Mike. I like a nice Nazi fact. Nazi fact. In 1938, the German army selected Werner Goldberg to appear on recruitment posters as the ideal German soldier. Ha! <laughs> it's a guess he was Jewish, by yes. chance. Two years later, he was discharged from the army because his father was Jewish. <laughs> With a name like Goldberg, <laughs> eh? Hey? Who would have thunk it? Who would thunk it? Who would have thunk it? But both he and his father did survive the Holocaust. Well, that's something. She ain't had to go through it, though. Mm. We are recording this on Holocaust Memorial Day by a weird coincidence. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, don't let that happen again, eh? <laughs> so not. Let's just I'll do that again as a species, please. Shame it's already happened again since, but, mm. you know, let's not do the systematic thing, eh? Oh, oh shit, we've done that too. Let's just not do it anymore. No. A typical teaspoon of soil in the Amazon contains 400 different fungal species. A teaspoon? Yep. Oh, well, remind me not to eat a teaspoon of soil from the Amazon? <laughs> and what, uh, men do, like them monsters on The Last of Us? Yeah. 
Oh, Maybe that's where it starts. Mm. Some crazy bastard eating all that fungal stuff. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's a diverse yeah, Amazon is, isn't it? It's impressive. It's very impressive. I wonder how many we've got. Fuck all, probably. Yeah. <laughs> you just got some pits. Seven. Seven funguses. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the main reason why, apparently, clotheslines are illegal in states of America is because it's unsightly and it brings down the uh, property wow. value. Is what? that it, really? Yeah, it's unsightly wow. and it looks yeah, untidy. That's terrible. Yeah. A load of bollocks. Oh, that sounds so much like a fucking Karen thing. Mm. I'm putting it to the neighbourhood committee. You can't yeah. have a washing line. You're making the neighbourhood line. You're bringing down house prices. Oh, that's yeah. so Karen-y. Maybe the Karens have always been with us. So they have. They have. Been yeah. So the, sli- the sight of drying clothes is sometimes viewed <clears throat> as an eyesore or a marker of poverty that lowers property values. Ah. <clears throat> See, I get, I get, kind of get it now because when you think of like New York in like the, when you think of New York, right, and then up the t- apartment blocks and tiny lines from one to the other, clothes lines across the balconies, yeah, and across from one to the other, yeah, yeah, I get it. Not just that, it'd be uh, they can't afford a washer, dryer. That's that's also what it is, isn't it? They can't afford a dryer. Can't afford yeah. a dryer, but the way I look at it is why pollute the earth by using up resources when you can just fucking hang it and use the sun and I, the I'd have thought Peter your number one concern would have been the electricity bill tumble dryers are massive. that's what I mean that's what I'm saying the, the footprint you're putting on the using resources and the money yeah yeah the money but the actual the carbon footprint itself oh yeah oh I love my uh, clothes smog fresh did you know? <laughs> did you know that an, an email has a carbon footprint? Well, the electricity you use to send it, I guess. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Mm. Not as much as the Royal Mail delivering it, don't they? No. You know, in their vans and planes and helicopters yeah, and how many emails are sent a day? Oof. Well, yeah, that's the problem. But then you look at the rise in online ordering, we're not even talking about Royal Mail, we're talking about Amazon, we're talking about all the different cur- other, other couriers and marketplaces are available online. They're all being delivered, I guess. It's, it's huge, isn't it? You think it'd be, when you think of the carbon footprint of the entire day-to-day logistics chain, mm. that includes all the lorries, all the planes, all the ships, just moving our shit where we need it to be. Mm. It's crazy. And then, like, <laughs> driving your car's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not as bad as that fucking diesel belching ship. Is the next fact going to cheer us up? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Maybe. The f- this is the final one of the night. Can anyone guess what the world record for sitting in a barrel on top of a pole is? Time. Yeah. Seven days, four hours, and 13 minutes. No. More or less? More. More? Fucking hell. Okay. 12 days. More than 12. 30 days. More than 30. 79 days. Oh, so close. I'll give it you. 78 days. I was being been crowned even guessed. You've got to get in there. I was going to say three days at first. <laughs> 78 78 days 23 hours and 14 minutes oh well fucking what well, happened then you fall 79 off 79 days then basically you just gave up that was it you yeah, had enough must have done by that point fuck me wouldn't you yeah 80 days nearly yeah. Jesus what, a on a barrel how big's the pole don't know on water where are you going to shit in the barrel, I guess. Oh! <laughs> well, you'd hang your arse uh, in, but then yeah. you've got to balance, the haven't you? <laughs> you've got to balance it then, haven't you? You just have a little bag or something, don't you? You shit in a bag and fling it outside. It's a barrel full of water, water though, isn't it? Water, mate. Doesn't say water. Yeah, there's just a barrel. A barrel. Just sitting in a barrel on top of a pole. So you've got to constantly balance that shit as well, haven't you? David Blaine, mm. he David, thought he was know, good. If yeah. he did that, I, you know what? I'd throw you remember when he did in. that? You remember when he did that London thing where he was in the glass box? In the glass and box. people were like holding and McDonald's burgers up. Yeah, like, in true British rods. style, we were just like throwing eggs at him because we're Brits and we're not easily impressed by random bullshit magical stunts. <laughs> and cheeseburgers. So, and no that. one cares that you go without food, mate. We just think you're a dick. <laughs> it's a very, it was a very British thing and I kind of liked it. It was a stunt anyway. Oh, of course it was. He, he, he had sustenance from something. He must have. Because you can't, you can't survive for 40 days or whatever it was. I was more impressed than ever had a wank. 
Weren't you? Balls the size of watermelon. Yeah. 40 yeah. days, that wank. Because you just look at a glass box. Is that how long it was? It was 40 days, wasn't it? Or something like that. Mm, something like that. Really. Was, I couldn't do that. I can barely go four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. But still, <laughs> or am I? <laughs> fair play, like that's fucking, that's some serious stamina, that, isn't it? Mm. Imagine sleep, like just. You sleep in, in a sort of ball, feet, all sort of position, wouldn't you? Thinking, fuck me, I'm hungry. <clears throat> yeah, but people would be, what, fishing rod you up some food, wouldn't they? Surely. I don't know, it was just, it was just a glass box, wasn't it? Oh, the guy in the barrel. Oh, the barrel. Oh, yeah. Well, he's different. Yeah, yeah. That was hardcore. Yeah, that, that was. I mean, because even to shit over when the side doesn't say. Uh, maybe they just give you a bag to shit in then, because you couldn't. You'd have to position it. You're on a pole. You're balancing, aren't you? Mm. Yeah. So, you know, you getting up to lean your ass over the side of the barrel. That's going to create a massive weight shift. Yeah, it's not ideal. No, it's not. It's not optimal. Certainly not optimal. Oh well, I'm gonna probably think about that a lot. Perhaps there's a poo hole, so halfway down. Ah, oh, maybe there was. Yeah, you just there's a little hole in the bottom. Ring piece over it. Probably a little. Head, watch out! It's coming down. Four. <laughs> you don't want to be under that, do you? <laughs> well, it could have been worse. <laughs> um, you, you, you could have been the dude shoveling the shit from underneath the uh, medieval castle's walls. That's how toilets of medieval castles were. They built them. They built a chute into the wall. Mm. They sort of went down and popped out the bottom. And so the king or whoever's in there taking a shit on the privy just drops his shit down a chute. And when it's too much, the old dung person has to come along and shovel it away. Job's a job. No <laughs> no job is a job, you're right, Claire. It's no different from shoveling cow shit or anything, really, is it? I don't know, human shit's a bit worse, I was. It's all in the mind. I don't know. In them days, they wouldn't have given a fuck about that. The one I saw today was like a fucking baby. <laughs> He's still scarred by I that. am, man. Wow. <laughs> long story short, I needed to go for a crap this morning at work. And obviously the wise man craps on company time, not your own. <laughs> so there's only two toilets that I went across the factory floor, right, from the warehouse to the factory floor to the slightly better toilets. One was occupied. The other, I lifted the seat half knowing what I was going to find, but nothing like, <laughs> what, like what I actually found. It was like a baby mate, the shit in girth. And it was like in the water, out the water, it was curling round. It was a U turn, basically. And it was like Bono. <laughs> <laughs> South Park. Right? It, it's going to grow into Bono. I tried to flush. Yeah? The toilet blocked. Oh dear, that everyone thought it was you. No, no, no. I just immediately left. But then I had to walk across the other side of the fucking factory. To find me somewhere, just you know, my to find a new fortress. Find, of solitude. find a corner to shit in. <laughs> find a new <laughs> the were no to longer find a new fortress of solitude. The toilets were no longer an option, so you just found a corner <laughs> and went. <laughs> no one's watching. Curl, curl don't, one out. Don't because I have found shits in bags in my yard. What? what? Well, yeah, lorry drivers are at night. They park in, if they're not ready to be unloaded. They'll park in my yard. I'm the yard man. I run the yard. I organise the yard. <laughs> And yeah, I've gone before to, go down. And I've literally gone behind got pallets stacked against the fence and I've gone behind the pallets. Do you sort of have a quick look, make sure there's you know check yeah, let's have a quick look really. Check the barcode number or something. Quick wank more like yeah, have a quick wank. <laughs> Maybe go for the odd four slide go for the odd <laughs> slide piss more than like Yeah, four hour mark, Claire, like, yeah. Go have a wank. <laughs> and there's been a bag of human shit. Oh that some lorry driver has took a dump and just thrown out his cab. Against the fence. And it's like, oh my God, that's See, grim. A, another reason why I don't want to be a lorry driver. Things like that. Getting caught short, like, oh, I need a shit. There's you no toilets around. You get a little mobile, like little portable sort of like port potty type mm. things that are a bit more sanitary than that. Well, I hope so. Because they're fucking... Because a co-op bag does not hold feces well, I can oh, tell you that yeah. much. Oh, dear. Oh, let's end it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, 
Yeah. I've been Ben. Thanks for listening. Don't join the flavor raid and don't join a call. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. No, I've been Claire. I'm shit in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're an astronaut. They use nappies. Do they? Yeah, on the first, on Apollo 11, mate, they were shitting in plastic bags. Nowadays, they use nappies. Yeah, well, even so. Oh, never, <laughs> unless, really? Don't yeah. shit in a bag unless you're one of the Apollo mission pilots as astronauts. No, no, if you're going to need to have a shit in a bag, just get nappies instead. <laughs>